The Byzantines of the 7th to 12th centuries hurled a mysterious substance at their enemies in naval battle. This liquid, shot through tubes or siphons, burned in water and could only be extinguished with vinegar, sand, and urine. We still don't know what this chemical weapon, known as Greek fire, was made of. The Byzantines guarded the secret, jealously, ensuring only a select few knew the secret, and the knowledge was eventually lost altogether. Today, we still do not know exactly how Greek fire was made, or what the chemical composition of the substance was. For a long time, it was assumed that Greek fire contained a generous portion of saltpeter, a potassium nitrate compound that is akin to gunpowder. The only basis for this assumption was the descriptions of Greek fire that refer to thunder and smoke, which led many to assume the reports were describing an explosion. This claim has been discounted, however, because there is no evidence of saltpeter being used in Europe or the Middle East prior to the 1200s. Emperor Leo the Wise, who wrote one of the most important Byzantine military works, Tactica, said that Greek fire was poured onto the decks of ships and ignited from afar to destroy the enemy's ships. If Greek fire was comprised of quicklime, it would have ignited on contact with ship decks, which notoriously wet. But what Leo the Wise describes was that the ships were set afire by tossing a flaming grenade or shooting a flaming arrow to ignite the Greek fire that was already on the ship's decks. Three ancient accounts of a substance known as vitrum flexile, flexible glass, are not clear enough to determine that this substance actually existed. The story of its invention was first told by Petronius d. 63 AD. He wrote about a glassmaker who presented the emperor Tiberius, who reigned 14 to 37 AD, with a glass vessel. He asked the emperor to hand it back to him, at which point, the glassmaker threw it to the floor. It didn't break, it only dented, and the glassmaker hammered it quickly back into shape. Fearing the devaluation of precious metals, Tiberius ordered the inventor beheaded so the secret of Vitrum Flexile would die with him. Pliny the Elder, d. 79 AD, told this story as well. He said that, although the story was frequently told, it may not be entirely true. The version told a couple hundred years later by Dio Cassius morphed the glassmaker into a sort of magician. When the vessel was thrown to the floor, it broke and the glassmaker fixed it with his bare hands. If the unfortunate Roman glassmaker did indeed invent Vitrum Flexile, it seems he was thousands of years ahead of his time.